I have personally never been too interested in the Nintendo Switch Online's Virtual Console Game Library, which isn't really called Virtual Console this time around, but when the Game Boy and Game Boy Advance were announced, my interest was piqued. NES games were fun, but only 4 minutes at a time besides Punch-Out and the Mario games. And the NSES and SNES games were awesome but still showed growing pains of the early days of gaming. However, since my mother has a Game Boy and Game Boy Advance collection, I had already played Game Boy games, so I felt a personal connection to them and I guess you could say nostalgia. I've played the most of Mario Land, Mario Land 2, and Frogger's Adventure, of which only Mario Land 2 was added to Switch Online, alongside 8 other Game Boy or Game Boy Color games. I've played through all 9 of these games' main stories, if they have one, some of which took 10 minutes and some took around 10 hours, all to deliver the definitive ranking of these games, to show you which of these games are worth playing and which are an easy pass. This is only the original Game Boy slash Game Boy Color collection, not the Game Boy Advance games that I don't have to, nor do I currently want the expansion pass. What's up YouTube, Jame Comics here. Like, subscribe, and comment your favorite Game Boy games down below. Let's get into it. And I'm going to rank these, well not really a ranking, but I'm going to go in order from least recommended to most recommended. So we're going to start with the least recommended, and we have Metroid 2 The Return of Samus. Easily the least playable game on the Switch Online Game Boy Collection. Metroid 2 is pretty bad, okay? And I like Metroid games, I love the series. Metroid Zero Mission and Metroid Dread are my favorites right now, but, but this game is not good, okay? This game is not good. It is very vague and cryptic about where you need to go and in what order. All of the screens look very similar. There is no map, which is terrible, and even with the Game Boy Color settings, the game is very drab and ugly visually. And I don't care too much about the graphics here, I'm, I'm not gonna rag on that because it's a Game Boy game, but th the lack of a map and lack of direction just really kills this game for me. On a positive note, Samus' moveset feels great as always, and story-wise, this game is one of the most important in the Metroid timeline. The story is very simple, albeit, but its lore implications are insane, as Samus wipes out all of the series titular Metroids, uh, I guess spoiler, besides one. The game only really has one boss, the Queen Metroid. I mean, I guess there are Omega Metroids, but they don't really count, because there's three of them. Yeah, the Queen Metroid isn't even that interesting. Even the NES Metroid had multiple bosses, making this sequel a downgrade to the original in that department, as well as every other department. I wouldn't recommend playing this game since you couldn't without a guide, which I had to use the entire time, and if you want to experience this chapter of the Metroid lore, you should just play the 3DS remake, Metroid Samus Returns. I spent 6 hours and 27 minutes playing this game, and I'd give it a 2 out of 10. Alone in the Dark, The New Nightmare The version of Alone in the Dark, The New Nightmare on the Game Boy Color is obviously extremely different from the home console version, and it's fine but not necessarily fun. Similar to Metroid 2, the game is pretty vague, but unlike The Return of Samus, it's beatable without a guide, as the screens are all different enough. The biggest issue of this game is how clunky it feels to move around, it's hard to tell where the exits are on each screen, and the combat sections, if you could even call them that, are enjoyable but terrible to control. The graphics are ugly and a lot of the action is shown through still images. There is only one boss, which you fight twice, but that's alright as it isn't an action game, an excuse Metroid 2 does not have. The puzzles are fun, but they don't make up for the lackluster rest of the game. It's also worth mentioning how strange the characters look, like the main man Carnaby or whatever his name is, looks like a PS1 version of Christian Bale. I wouldn't recommend playing this game, like Metroid 2 if you want to experience this game in its story, play the better version, the one on home consoles. I played 1 hour and 43 minutes of this game, and I'd give it a 3 out of 10. Game & Watch Gallery 3 Game & Watch Gallery 3 is exactly what it promises to be, nothing more, nothing less. The mini games here are all fun, and the Mario reskins look great. Nonetheless, they are still just Game & Watch games. So I do recommend checking it out for Nintendo's history, but don't expect to be blown away. I played this game for 21 minutes, and I'd give it a 6 out of 10. Kirby's Dream Land I love Kirby games, if you follow the channel you'd know that, and the game that started it all, Kirby's Dream Land, is still amazing to this day. Kirby feels great to control, and while he doesn't have his signature copy ability, the game still satisfies. Iconic Kirby villains like Wispy Woods, Kraco, and King DDD debut here and have very similar attack patterns to their current ones, showing just how well made this game was. The game is probably the shortest Kirby installment in terms of mainline games, but it still has that signature Sakurai polish to it. It's not hard or lengthy to beat, so I'd recommend just blasting through it at least once. I played this game for 36 minutes, 
and I'll give it a 7 out of 10. Tetris. Tetris is the best Game Boy game. Okay, let's, let's be up, up front here. But I'm gonna have to keep it down here, and this is why. Everybody knows Tetris, and everybody loves Tetris. And the Game Boy plays a humongous part in the puzzle game's popularity, as it was packaged in with it. The gameplay here is perfect. It's perfect Tetris. However, there are better, but pretty much the same, Tetris experiences on the Switch, like Puyo Puyo Tetris, Tetris Effect, and Tetris 99. If you have Switch Online to play this Tetris version, you obviously have Tetris 99, which is the same game but presented in a more visually attractive way, so, I'd so I would recommend that game over this. Still, I played this version for 10 minutes, but I had played it before on the actual Game Boy hardware when younger, and I'd give it a resounding 10 out of 10. It really should technically be at the number one spot, but like I said, there are better free alternatives on Switch Online. Gargoyle's Quest Gargoyle's Quest is the most underrated game on this list that really deserves more attention. As spin-offs of Ghouls and Ghosts, or Ghosts and Goblins, whatever that series is called, I mean, I've heard both, the game follows a gargoyle named Firebrand as he tries to save his realm. The gameplay here is perhaps the most unique on this list. It functions like an RPG, but every battle slash level plays out like a 2D platformer. It effortlessly combines RPG gameplay with 2D platforming, and I was extremely impressed. Additionally, Firebrand gets new projectiles throughout the game, mixing the gameplay up whenever it starts to feel stale. The bosses are really fun, and the pixel art is not too bad for the Game Boy. Admittedly, the art's not great either. I absolutely recommend playing this one all the way through, as it's not too long, and there's nothing quite like it coming out nowadays. Gargoyle's Quest took me 2 hours and 47 minutes to beat, and I'd give it an 8 out of 10. Super Mario Land 2, 6 Golden Coins Any mainline Mario game is great, and Super Mario Land 2 is no exception. The pixel art here is cute, and a huge leap from the first of Mario Land, which is surprisingly omitted from this library. Wario makes his first appearance here, and his boss fight is simple, but his personality still shines. All the bosses are pretty fun, not gonna lie. Every level here is set in a different environment, setting a standard that games like Donkey Kong Country and Rayman Origins would follow. It's so unique for a Mario game to deviate from the grid-based level design formula, and this is, if I'm correct, the first one to do so, and it does so excellently. Mario controls amazingly, and the power-ups are fun as always. The standout level to me here is the space one that emulates low gravity. You can't go wrong with this game, so check it out. I played it for about 1 hour and 53 minutes, and I'd give it a 9 out of 10. The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening Deluxe, or DX. Link's Awakening is a Zelda game, so it's no surprise that it's 10 out of 10 quality. While the Switch remake is better, this deluxe version, itself a remake, is still amazing on its own and contains most of the same content as the full price Switch version. The dungeons are superb, the controls are amazing, and the pixel art is good for the Game Boy. The game has so many different areas, dungeons, and bosses, and took me the longest to be out of all of the games on this list. The music is elegant as the Zelda series is known for, and the story is admittedly kind of stupid, but still engaging enough to keep you playing. The gameplay itself makes up for it, however. It's not the best 2D Zelda game, Link to the Past or Link Between Worlds probably take that title, but it's still a banger to this day. You absolutely should check it out, and be on the lookout for when the Oracle games drop on the service. I'll try to review them. I played this game for 12 hours and 39 minutes, as well as the Switch remake for 30 hours before, and I give it a resounding 10 out of 10. Wario Land 3 If you told me a week ago that I'd call Wario Land 3 the best non-Tetris Game Boy game, I would not have believed you, but I am so glad to be surprised. This is one of the most creative 2D platformers I have ever played. Wario is constantly unlocking more powers and going back to old levels, as each level has 4 chests to unlock. This makes each level feel extremely fleshed out and unique upon each return. The pixel art here is the best on the Game Boy slash Game Boy Color. Wario is super expressive, making Mario from the first Mario Land look empty and lifeless. The boss fights are really fun and interesting, with one even being a soccer match against a rabbit. Yeah, I don't think I mentioned, but this game is extremely bizarre. The game does have some vague moments, but nothing near as head-scratching as Metroid 2 or Alone in the Dark. This is literally one of the best 2D platformers I have ever played, up there of Donkey Kong Country Returns, Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze, and Mario Bros. 3. I absolutely recommend that you check out this game and finish it. There's so much content there that I didn't even complete. I did finish the main story though. 
I played this game for 9 hours and 45 minutes, and I give it a perfect 10 out of 10. That was my order of recommendation for all 9 Game Boy slash Game Boy Color games on Nintendo Switch Online. I don't think I could do this for another game collection as this was extremely tiring, but I may keep reviewing every Game Boy game added to the collection. Depends. I played these games for over 35 hours and I still hear Game Boy sound effects ringing in my ears. I should get that checked out. The two new additions to Game Boy Switch Online were just announced, but I had this video ready already so I'll review both of them in short soon, so subscribe to the channel to keep up with that. Anywho, tell me in the comment section down below your favorite Game Boy or Game Boy Color game on the Switch. Thank you for watching, JM Comics, out.